I hope you guys enjoyed a tour of the cottage garden. Now let's take a look at the protege garden. As I shared with you guys in previous videos, this has been a rough year for the protege garden. It's been a rough year for us. And this garden has not been very bountiful at all. I've gotten a good bit of squash. I did harvest a lot of potatoes, a lot of potatoes. I got some onions. Now my fall garden last year was awesome. We got a lot, but this spring and summer garden, we haven't got that much. No tomatoes, except for the sun golds. We got some, some, a lot of sun golds. Um, no cucumbers really, no, um, no beans. We eat a lot of beans and peas and we didn't get any. So it's been a really hard year for the protege garden. But I am hopeful that the fall garden is going to be fabulous. Now I've got right now, I've got some uh, fall tomatoes in the greenhouse growing and it's not long and they're going to be ready to transplant into the garden. So I'm hoping I'm going to at least get some of those tomatoes. And I, I've started a few of my cool season vegetables in seed trays and I'm getting ready to really get those pumping out and going. I did come in about a month ago and sowed some more peas and a few other things just to try to get some things going in the garden for right now in this transition period from too hot for anything to grow to too, it's not cold enough for anything to grow. So we're like in this transition period. But there are a few things that we can be growing right now and I've got some of those things going pretty good in the garden right now so i hope i'm going to get some of that and then i'm counting on a wonderful fall garden i've been working on cleaning up the potage garden really good and giving all the perennials and herbs a bit of a haircut harvesting what i can get and just getting everything cleaned up so the roses have all had a bit of a pruning the perennials have all pretty much gotten good haircuts. All along the front of my potage garden here on each side of the gate and all the way down the front there. This is like a perennial herb and rose border and eventually there will be a fence that goes from this post all the way down and this border will be in front of that fence and then behind it is the potage beds. So all along the border, we've got perennials, herbs, roses, got a beautiful mix and diversity of all kinds of gorgeous things. This is Spanish lavender. This is Belinda's dream. I've got some cosmos blooming. The blanket flowers are still going strong over here. They don't mind the heat at all. This is echinacea and I've got it planted all throughout the garden and I've harvested all of it, the stems, the leaves, the flower petals, and the seed heads, getting ready for to make my echinacea tincture. This is tarragon. There's some empty spaces here where some things have died out. So I'll be replacing those this fall. Look how wonderful this yarrow looks now that it got a really good haircut. It's so pretty.
Here's some echinacea that's just getting started down here. This is my bed number one, and I've got some uh, savory growing here. I transplanted these Shasta daisies, and I finally got a bloom here. It's nice. But all of these little rows here, I'm getting ready to add compost for fall garden, my fall plantings. This is sweet potatoes. And they have been in the ground for, goodness, I don't even know how long they've been in the ground. I planted them back in the end of May, I believe. So, it's not going to be too long and it's going to be time to harvest them. As you walk around here, we're getting into the medicinal herb garden. And I've got lemon verbena yarrow that I've harvested most of it. Back here, this is roselle hibiscus. Won't be long and I'll be able to harvest some of this for tea. This rose is Hansa. And I love it. It's an old Rigosa rose. I'm growing it in the medicinal border here for rose hips. It makes big, wonderful rose hips. I've got some anise popping up back there. This is another rose I'm growing in my medicinal border. This one is called Basie's Blueberry. Isn't that sweet? And look at all the rose hips on here. I'm looking forward to harvesting these. A rose hip tea. Super high in vitamin C. More roselle. I've got a lot of roselle planted. Comfrey. I've harvested a good bit of comfrey. Yarrow. You can see my little steps here that I've made my pathway. And that is going to be leading you to where our muscadines are going to be planted. Got lemongrass that came back from last year. Echinacea. Anise. Anise hyssop. Marshmallow plant. This is whorehound. I harvest a lot of it. I've got it drying. I'm gonna try to make some cough drops. More hibiscus, roselle, lemongrass. And this is another rose in my medicinal border called Katie Road Pink. And I'm growing it here for the rose hips as well. See these big, beautiful rose hips? Now, usually in July, I come through and give all of my roses a little bit of a pruning, not, not a severe pruning, but just a little bit of pruning where I take it back, kind of shape it up, take out any damn branches, any wild uh, stems or branches on my repeat blooming roses because that, and then I give them a really good dose of fertilizer and that helps them to put on another great show in the fall. But in Katie Road Pink, is one of those repeat, repeat bloomers. And so is Basie's Blueberry, and so is Hansa, and so is Old Blush. All the ones that I have in my medicinal herb border here are repeat bloomers. But I am growing these roses here primarily for these rose hips. So I did come in and I took out anything that was dead and I cleaned them up a little bit and I fertilized but I left all of these rose hips because I'm gonna be harvesting these. Mullen was there and it got knocked over by the wind. So I'm hoping it reseeded itself in there and it'll come back again next year. And this is more marsh marshmallow and yarrow on the end here. 
And then look at these pomegranates. We transplanted these from the orchard over here early spring, I believe, is when Jean did it for me. Look how good they're doing. I mean, they made the move very well. And this one is putting on some flowers and developing its fruit. Nice. See, here's the flower that it makes. And then from the flower, it develops its fruit, which you can see there. That is awesome. Okay, let's move back around to the second bed of the potage, and we'll take a look at what's going on in there. Not much, because like I said, some of these beds are pretty empty because I am getting ready to add some compost and really pump this soil up so that it can grow some wonderful fall vegetables. So this is my second bed here. I did plant a few pumpkins in here. You can see these, they're coming on. So I should be able to harvest these before frost, have some pumpkins for the fall. But other than that, not much happening in this bed. So I'm gonna come in and add compost to these rows. This is the third bed here, and the rows here are empty in here. We're gonna add compost to those, but you can see on my little trellis here, I planted some birdhouse gourds here. And they're taking off and doing great. I need to train them up. They're going everywhere. I need to get out here and start training them up my trellis on this side is this blue pea blue butterfly pea i think is what it's called it has really high medicinal properties and benefits to make tea out of it and it makes a beautiful blue tea and i've never tried it i've never had it but i wanted to give it a try i got this from baker creek and I wanted to give these a try, and they just would not get going this spring. I planted these early spring. They just would not get going, but they are starting to go now. So hopefully, I'll be able to harvest some of this and try this tea. These are my green beans that I planted spring, late spring. They never did anything. They wouldn't grow. They wouldn't get going. No matter what I did, we were in that drought. No matter how much rain I gave them, no matter what I did, they just wouldn't grow. But I didn't give up on them. And when it rained 4th of July, they just started taking off. They took off fast and furious, filled up this whole trellis. But it's really hot, and I haven't had one flower on here. So there's no beans no flowers, no beans. It's just too hot for these green beans. These were Kentucky Wonder Pole beans, and it's just too hot for them to flower. So I'm, I'm debating. I don't know what to do. If I should leave these and see if they'll flower as it cools off and see if I might get some green beans, some pole beans, or if I need to just yank them out and do something else. I think I'm going to contact Greg over at Hall's Tools and ask his opinion of what he thinks I should do. But anyway, I don't know. I don't know if I should yank them out or if I should leave them. Maybe they'll bloom as it cools off. I don't know. We really need some green beans and I didn't get any, so I don't know what to do with that. But it really is lovely on my little bamboo teepee trellis here. And then on this trellis, I came in and popped in some Chinese noodle beans. And they're going nuts. I need to get them trained up this trellis. You can see all these empty spaces getting ready for compost and fall vegetables. And as we come around this bed, I've got more roselle there. I'm going to get a lot of roselle. I've got a pumpkin planted here. I can't remember which one. I'll have to go back and look. These are my Mississippi Pink Eye Purple Hole Peas. They 
didn't do very well either till the rain and then they started taking off and I'm getting lots of blooms on these and lots of peas. I've been harvesting some. I've almost got a mess. I think by the time I pick today, I'm going to end up with a mess of peas for dinner. Yay! I don't think I'm going to get enough to can and put up and preserve, which I'm really sad because I'm completely out. But I'm going to be happy with whatever I do get. I come in and planted zinnias all along the border of these peas. So they're starting to come up. Then on the end here is a pumpkin that I planted. I have to go back and see which one it was. Then this is a butternut squash that I was trying to see if it was gonna keep going, but it's just not doing well. I'll probably yank it. My zinnias are pretty. They're about played out though, but some of them are looking really beautiful. Butterflies still love them. I'm gonna save the seeds from all of these. So I'm starting to come through and just harvest the seeds that are ready. This was my tomato trellises back here. I ripped out all the diseased ones. See the empty spots? That's where I'm gonna come in and put some of the other tomatoes that I'm growing. But these uh, sun golds and these Juliets are doing really good. So I just cleaned them up really good and just left them. My basil looks beautiful. I've just let all of this go to flower for the pollinators. This is cinnamon basil here. And that one is Genovese. I've harvested a good bit from it and I've just let this go to flower. Now I have this volunteer watermelon come up here. It must have been a seed that was in my compost or something. But I've got a really big melon in here somewhere. Here it is. We checked it the other day, it wasn't quite ready, so Hopefully before long we'll be able to pick this bad boy and eat it. So this has pretty much been my tomatoes for the year. I've been making tomato sandwiches out of these little tomatoes. <laughs> these were my tomatillos. Green tomatoes that I was going to try to make the salsa verde out of and i was able to harvest a few but they just hadn't done well there's still some flowers on here so i'm just gonna hold out and try to see if i get some more y'all gotta look at this basil this is that cardinal basil look how beautiful that is isn't that pretty? For any of my flower farming friends out there, you got to grow this one. Cardinal basil. It is gorgeous in arrangements. Pollinators are loving it. I haven't used this one for cooking or any kind of culinary dishes. I've just been strictly growing this one for the beautiful flowers and to attract the pollinators. So I don't know about the flavor on this or not. I should just try it and see. My marigolds are doing well. They don't mind the heat. Zinnias, marigolds, and sunflowers. They just don't care about the heat at all. So those are great things to fill your beds up with right now. Just to take up those spaces to help decrease weeds. My grape arbor here is looking so pretty it's filling out so nice i need to work on it a little bit it's got a little bit of disease issues here i sprayed it with neem but i need to get with dr powell and see what i should do about this 
But look at all of these grapes, clusters of grapes hanging here. I can't wait to pick these. Here's a few ready here. So the varieties I have in here are Pierce disease resistant varieties. That's about, that's all we can grow here in the South. They do have seeds in them, but they're still really, really good. So I'm growing Foxy Lottie, Daytona, Stover. Those are the varieties that I'm growing here on this arbor. Now this bed here, I've got this sweet alyssum planted here. I planted this, I grew it from seed, and I planted this in the spring, this spring, early spring. I planted it on both sides. This side's doing much better than that side. But this is just the sweetest little flower. It's tiny, attracts a lot of good beneficial insects, smells sweet, looks pretty. And usually in the past, during the summertime, it just dies out and it don't do that well. But this actually has done great this year and even endured our heat and our drought. All right, these beans here are black beans that I was trying. I still haven't got any beans from it. There are some flowers, so I'm hopeful. These are my peppers. I've got some little lunchbox snack peppers from Hoss. My bell peppers from Hoss. And I didn't plant a lot of peppers because we don't eat a lot of peppers. Now we do eat a lot of bell peppers, but I have a lot of those put up in the freezer. So I didn't plant a whole, whole lot. These are some different jalapeno peppers that I picked up at Petals and planted. More black beans. These are okras that I have planted. See, I planted all of these rows here with black beans and pink Okinawa okra. The pink Okinawa okra only got two to come up, which is that one. Oh, goodness. I didn't get to come out here at all yesterday and look what's going on. <laughs> I've got some pink Okinawa okra ready to harvest. Look at these beautiful blooms. Okra's in the hibiscus family and they have these gorgeous hibiscus blooms. So, so pretty. So I need to come harvest this, but I only ended up with two pink Okinawa plants that come up from a whole pack of seeds, that one and that one. So I came back in and I've re-sowed all of these beds where the black beans and the okra didn't come up with Clemson spineless and Alabama crimson red okra. And I've just kind of got it sporadically coming up, but these rows just have not done well at all. So I gotta get some compost in here. This is the red crimson coming up here. Look at these pretty zinnias. I love these colors. So I've got some more okra coming up there. And down here. So that's good. We eat a lot of okra. this bed i've got some sunflowers coming up these are sunflowers that i've saved the seed from pops sunflowers that he had in his garden a few years ago so i'm hanging on to these seeds and this is contender bush beans that we that i planted um gosh i can't remember when i did this i've got some flowers i'm seeing some flowers here. Maybe I'll get some beans. And then this is my black runner bean here. And it's finally taken off and go. Look at these beautiful red blooms. Now this one's supposed to be like it has different colors on the bean at different stages of it.
And where it didn't come up, I came in and planted, I think, Kentucky Wonder Pole Beans. So I'm probably not going to get any beans from those either. But I love these runner beans. They're so pretty. I'm excited to see the bean that they produce too. Real excited. And that is more roselle. It's all over my garden. I'm excited about that. That roselle is one that it just has not minded anything that's going on out here. Not the heat, not the drought, nothing. It just keeps on going and is doing really, really well. My olives are growing a little bit. Now this bed is full. That is Jerusalem artichokes. All of this around it was echinacea. I've harvested most all of it and some blanket flowers. And this is my goji berries here. I'm starting to see a few little berries develop. I just transplanted these over here too. And this is my glass gem flint corn. Starting the tassel. So this is corn that you make popcorn and cornmeal out of. Starting to form here. Plus it's gonna be beautiful decorations for the fall. This is done really well. And these are pumpkins. I call them my wedding pumpkins. I grew these, they're the white and the green ones. I grew these for my son and daughter-in-law's wedding this past fall and I saved the seed. And across from the pumpkins, you can see my blackberries. I still haven't got to these yet. I've got to finish pruning and training these. But these, I've pretty much got all of these completed, except from here. Just a couple here and then the other side because I ran out of gardener's tape. I had to get me some more. But I've got all of these done. So if you're growing blackberries on a trellis system, go check out my video that I just did on how to prune and train your blackberries. Now my raised beds are looking really, really, really bad. Look at all the grass in there. I've got to get those cleaned out. Get those weeds cleaned out. This borage, I'm fixing to pull all of this out and go put it in my compost garbage can. I make uh, compost tea out of this. Once I've harvested from it, when it gets to looking like this, I just yank it and I start making compost tea out of it. I will have a video about that in probably next week so y'all can check it out. I'm gonna yank this chart out and get these raised beds ready for some carrots and probably some spinach and just a few of my cool season vegetables are going in these. And then this over here was my new little bed that we made this year. And this is really like part of our fence that's gonna end up eventually going all the way around the potage. But I had tomatoes planted all along this trellis fence and they were all diseased and yuck, so we yanked them all, and I'm getting ready to put something else here. And then in front of them, I came in with basils and marigolds, and I really loved how this turned out. I think it looks really, really pretty. And they're both really good companion plants for your tomatoes. These are my tomatoes. They're doing good. They're doing really good. I think what I'm gonna do is come in here, pull off these bottom leaves, and I'm gonna pot these up to a little bit bigger pot and let them grow a little bit more and then I'm gonna transplant them in the ground. You can see I've got some Brussels sprouts popping up here. A few of my broccolis are coming up and some cabbages have come up. Then over here, I've just got some odds and ends, but these are all hollyhocks and they're the champagne 
and the jet black. And I sowed these seeds back in spring and I never got them in the ground. So I potted, they looked horrible and they still don't look that good. See how yellowed they are? But I potted them all up and I've been fertilized them with fish emulsion. So I hope they're gonna green up and I hope this is something that I can really add to the gardens this fall. Now here, I've been working on propagating some germander and some little true dwarf English boxwoods. I wanna make little borders around some of the beds with these. And they're expensive to buy, like $4 a plant for the germander and like $8 or $10 a plant for the little dwarf boxwoods. So I've just been taking clippings off of what I've have and I'm propagating to create my own. It's taking time and patience, but eventually I will get there. Now, look at the star of the greenhouse show. Moringa. We love our Moringa. We, we use it every single day. It's time to harvest again. I'm gonna come in and harvest about half of this and it'll grow again and I'll keep, keep, keep getting harvest off of this before the frost. So I just harvest it. I dry the leaves. Then I put them in a coffee grinder, grind them up into a real fine powder. And we sprinkle that on salads, oatmeals, yogurt, smoothies, super high in nutrition, super high. Now this is a little experiment that Chase and I did. These were some tomatoes that I grew from seed this, uh, like February. They were looking terrible. I never got them planted. I didn't have anywhere to plant them. And they looked horrible sitting in the greenhouse. Jason went fishing and caught some fish and we just chopped up a few of those fish and just put them in the bottom of these buckets just to see. Man, the first few days, it was pretty rank. It stunk, you couldn't hardly come over here. But we put them in the bottom of these big, about 15 gallon containers here and filled them up with good potting soil. And we just stuck those tomatoes in there. And I'm talking about they were tiny, tiny, sick, looked horrible. And now look at them, they're doing good. So we got mountain vineyards here and I've got a hostinator here. I mean, this was pitiful. This was just, I think it had like one leaf on it. It was horrible. And then over here, I've got boxcar willy. And these were all from Hoss and they're doing good. And I'm just using my greenhouse here since we don't have plastic on it as my trellis for them. Maybe I'll get some tomatoes off these. Okay, real quick, I've been telling y'all about this new area that we're going to start working on. Well, we really already have started working on it. And it's going to be our orchard. We're moving our orchard from way across over there where we first put it in. It just, I just couldn't keep up with all of it. Y'all, that orchard just was more than I could handle. With the potage, the cottage gardens, and all of the animals, the orchard was a pretty good size. And to be able to continue to manage it organically without any kind of herbicides or sprays, I just couldn't keep it all managed. And the deer got in there. It was hard to keep the deer out. We tried different deer fences different methods, different things. The deer kept getting in there, destroying my trees. The cows came in there and destroyed my trees. The neighbor's cows, it just, the weeds took over. It was just more than I could handle. So what our plan with that area is now is we're going to turn that into one of the rotational pastures for our goats and our other animals that we're planning to get in the future. So what we've been doing is going through this past fall and winter, and we're gonna do it again this fall and winter, moving out, transplanting what we feel like might possibly make the move. So this fall and winter, we moved blueberries, we moved figs, and we moved pomegranates. 
and have incorporated them into the Potage Garden. There's really only a few other things over there that I believe are gonna make the transplant okay. A lot of the pear trees that made it, and that's basically about all that's left out there. The deer pretty much destroyed, annihilated all of my apples. Um, the, the peach trees and the plum trees are good over there. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna leave those pear trees, we're gonna leave those plum trees, the peach trees, whatever's over there that's big and established, we're leaving them. Maybe possibly we'll get some fruit from them, maybe we won't, I don't know. The goats are probably gonna do some severe damage to them, but we will see. So I am revamping my whole idea of an orchard. And what we're, I'm still gonna have an orchard because I'm gonna grow fruit. Because we love fruit and I love growing fruit. So I'm still gonna have my orchard. I'm just incorporating it into my potage garden because one, I'll be able to manage it better up here. I mean, this is right by our house. It's like in our front yard. My garden is in my front yard. So it is in my zone one. So if you're familiar with permaculture, this is definitely zone one. And zone one is the area of your farm that you're going to touch and you're going to see and you're going to be in every single day. And a lot of times people put their orchards like out in zone two because usually your orchard is not something that has to be maintained every single day. But I'm going to incorporate my orchard into my zone one with my potage garden and I feel like I'm gonna be able to manage that much, much better. Plus I can manage the deer pressure up here a little bit better because we're up here, the dogs are up here, the noise is up here and I, the lights and I think I can manage the deer pressure a little bit better up here as well. And the third reason is, is we want that space up there, that area to be included in with our pastures so that we can divide fence areas and rotate our animals so that they're gonna be healthier, they're gonna have more to graze. It's just gonna be a healthier situation for all of our animals. So, we're moving the orchard to the potage. We built our blackberry trellises in here on the edge of this potage garden bed and on the edge of that potage garden bed. So that's our blackberry trellises. The next thing we're doing is our blueberries and they suffered. They didn't make the move very gracefully. Like that, that's pretty much dead. That is dead. That one's making it, it's just struggling a bit. These are all alive, but they're struggling. So I'm gonna come in and work on them a little bit, prune them a little bit, fertilize them, try to baby them, hope they make it. Whatever don't make it, I'm just gonna replace them this fall. So this is my potage garden beds here. You can see all the way down, this is the edge of them. And this is where we've incorporated our blueberries on the edge of the potage garden here. Also, we've moved our figs over here. Most of our figs, some of them we left. The ones, I had a couple of lemon figs. I'm not a big, huge fan of the lemon figs, so I just left it out there in the orchard. I moved my favorites over here. Which were LSU Purple, Celeste, O'Rourke, Green Isha, and Papa John. Those are some of my favorites. So what we did is we kind of put them along the edge here. So this will be where the potage orchard market garden will stop. So this is gonna act as like a fence. And then you can see we still have room over there to dry to get to all of the animals, the garden shed, chicken coop. And that takes you down to our pavilion and our creek, which is down that way. So we also moved these pomegranates, which I showed you earlier. And they're kind of along the border of this whole garden area. So they're gonna be right near the fence, right by the fence area here. And then right here, this is the medicinal herb garden. 
and you can see as you come off that is a bit of a hill that is a slope and a hill that goes down into a flat pasture there's the pavilion in our creek area so what we're going to do the reason i've put these stepping stones here and created this path we're going to make a really pretty arbor right here with a little gate that leads you into this area and we're going to do muscadines and kiwi vineyard style on the side of this hill this is pretty much center of the potache garden This is the center aisle of the potage garden. So as you walk down this aisle, that's olive tree. That's gonna really be cool whenever it gets big. So as you walk down this aisle, we'll have another really beautiful arbor here and a little gate that you can walk through. And then as you come through, You've got blueberries all the way down each side and blueberries all the way down each side. Then as you enter this arbor here, you're leaving the potage garden and you're entering into what is going to be the orchard market garden and possibly a cut flower garden plot. So it's going to go all the way past that corn a little bit just a little bit it's gonna go all the way there and I'm gonna have espalier fruit trees which is gonna be pretty much my fence line here and you can see the figs there and we're gonna have a few other fruit trees in here and then I'm gonna divide all of this space here up into four squares with a pathway going down like a cross pathway that goes down and this way between the four squares those four squares are going to be our market garden and our cut flower garden squares so the market garden is not to actually grow food to take to a market and sell it the market garden for us is just going to be the place to grow like our row crop type stuff like corn and melons and pumpkins and um okra because we need a lot of okra so it's going to be a place to grow those type of crops for us for our own personal consumption and then i want one of the squares to rotate in those four squares we're going to do rotations i want one of those squares to be for cut flowers so that i can grow cut flowers every year and in the mix of all this is also going to be different fruit trees and that's how we're going to create this paradise so we'll talk about this a lot more in the future as we go because this is really horrible soil here all it is is sand and all we've done for the past two years here is we just plowed it up stuck seed in the ground hoped it made it and not a whole some success but not a whole lot of success so um, we're going to really start working on this area with weed tarps, compost, cover crops, and we'll be talking about this area a whole lot more in the future, and we'll bring you along with us and show you how we're doing this. So we've got some really big and fun plans in addition to the potage garden. So I am looking forward to bringing you guys along with me on this journey, and thank you so much for hanging out with me today and taking a tour of the potage garden. Even though it's not just lush and bountiful and full of vegetables and fruit, it is still a beautiful space and a refuge to me. And I thank you so much for joining me in the garden today. God bless you. Y'all have an amazing week and I'll see y'all on the next video.